So welcome to our daily management um, one hour session. A little bit about Lean Focus and who we are, and just in case you have not heard of us or been engaged with us yet. Uh, we are a passionate, collaborative, and straightforward people who care about you, your business, just like it's our own. Our vision is to build a long lasting, continuous improvement cultures that serve as strategic advantage. For our clients, our mission is to change the old way of thinking uh, by being fact-based, radically candid, and deeply committed. And our values are simple. We treat everyone with respect. And we practice humble leadership uh, focused on Gamba, and we set high expectations. Just one more thing to add to this is that on our team, there are no junior associates. Everyone on our team has 20 plus years of lean experience. And that's one of the things that differentiates us from competition. These are some of the companies that we are working with or have worked with before. And how we create value is helping companies grow, increase profits and improve the capital turns. We do that through usage of our Lean Focus business system. So you guys can see this is the Lean Focus business system that is comprised of five elements. Guiding principles, foundational system, growth, lean, and leadership. We're going to focus on daily management, which is part of the foundational system for today's webinar. You guys, uh, or everybody from JB Pico, has access to our foundational system. So if you need any of the training decks, uh, they are available to you. Just please reach out to your CI department. So some of the expectations for today's meeting. Uh, this is only a one hour session. Normally this would be a Kaizen event for us to start to learn about data management and set it up. So there are no expectations of perfection. Uh, what we would like is if there's something that you have learned um, that you can put in place to your current daily management. If you have not started with daily management yet, we would encourage you to try it and then use your CI team and myself through them to support you and guide you along. When we go to learn something, like, can you, can you guys please make sure that everyone is muted? Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna mute everyone just to make sure everybody can hear. Okay, when we go through any learning process, regardless what we are learning about, we go through this process of learning, doing, and teaching. During the learning phase, there's a lot of confusion and struggle, and that's to be expected. And really the only way to learn is by actually doing it. So there's, right, that's why we encourage everyone to try this. Uh, and we understand that there's gonna be some confusion and struggle during this process. Um, once we put in the reps, this is where the coaching and self-reflection starts afterwards. So we would like to encourage everyone to use it so we can start putting in the reps so we can go through that learning and doing phase. Once we do that for a while and it becomes a habit, then we move into the teaching phase where we are the ones teaching others, we create practitioners and we reinforce the culture. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute everyone now. Hopefully everything is working just to make sure I don't miss any questions. So what is daily management? It is a scoreboard, basically, in the simplest terms, that will tell us whether we are winning or losing. And it's really a tool that will help us see where we are, you know, halfway through the game, make any just adjustments that we need in order to win the game. So if you think about watching any sports game, how interesting would it be to watch that game without the scoreboard? Even though we enjoy it, we may enjoy it for a little while, but if there's no school board, most of us will get bored and not be as interested anymore. Same thing when we go drive a car, right? We have a dashboard that is giving us information as we are driving, 
how fast we're going, if we're braking, you know, what's the, that we're slowing down, are we running out of fuel? Did the check engine light came on, right? It's a system that alerts us that something needs to be done or we need to make an adjustment. Daily management is the same thing, same principles we're trying to implement in our business. We're trying to put a metrics and make it visual so we can take action and go in the direction that we want to. Daily management can be done hourly, it can be done daily, it can be done weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. It really depends on the cadence of the business. Daily management is visual, metrics-driven, collaborative problem-solving process. And this is one of the key elements of daily management that most companies miss. We wanna make sure that we don't miss it. If we set up, if and when we set up daily management, and if we do not have problem solving, it becomes an additional thing that we do without helping us getting better. And when it happens, people lose focus and then we don't sustain it. So having a problem solving, driving and driving improvements during daily management is the key. Another thing that daily management does for us is prioritizes the most important metrics for our department and our company. It's a, it's a system that helps us achieve the breakthrough results year over year. And it's really focused on improving the process and not blaming the people. It allows all the participants to act as owners, encouraging problem solving and driving resolutions as a team. So it's really a team sport. And being a team sport, it holds team members accountable to drive predictable, effective, productive work. When we are in daily management, it's really important that when we accept action, that we hold on to our word and we get things done in appropriate time that we committed to. There is a misconception that daily management is only for the shop floor or manufacturing areas. As long as we have a process, daily management applies to us. So if I am in sales or if I'm in accounting or engineering, regardless which back office area I work in, if there's a process, which there normally are that we follow, we can apply daily management to measure key and most important items, metrics, that will help us win on daily, weekly, monthly basis. Daily management drives Kaizen events. We're gonna learn in a, in a slides to come how we document the challenges and misses, reasons what's driving the misses, and how we go about using that to drive improvements. Daily management is a great tool to collect the data and it's really helpful with driving Kaizen events. Before I go into how would we go about installing daily management, are there any questions to what daily management is and how does it work? No, I don't have any. Okay. If we're good, then I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. So there's a three-step process to how to properly install daily management. And it starts with identify phase. One of the tools that we use most of the time is the value stream map, which helps us identify major processes major breakdowns in processes where are our biggest challenges that will help us narrow down critical key performance indicators that we need in order to drive our business in the direction that we want to. Once we do that, uh, we will construct the run charts for our KPIs so we can assess the trends to understand how that metric has been behaving is it been improving? Is it getting worse? And once we do that, we would go to Gemba to really understand what is happening currently. 
So I'm going to walk us through this process of how do we identify what to measure. As I mentioned, it starts with the value stream map. In this example, we are going from supplier to the customer. We're going through four major internal processes. Within those processes, there are specific cycle times, number of people, number of shifts. We have some scrap rates, some quality data. So we document what are the most relevant metrics that we measure at each process step to understand where are the biggest challenges. So once we have put a value stream together, it's gonna to point us to direction to what we should measure and where. When we go to set up daily management, there are different levels. In this example here, we're going from global to regional, to departments, to the cell level. When we are setting up daily management, it's important that we look at the metrics from the top, that would go down and then develop metrics bottom up. So we can make that connection between the highest level um, key performance indicators in what we do day in and day out. When we go to set up daily management, the most important ones are cell and department daily management. There is no way that we can be successful on a global scale or a regional scale, or each site cannot be successful unless each department, which means each individual who's working in that department is not successful. So we really pay a lot of attention and we focus on cell level and department level daily management when we're starting, because once we get those going, everything gets better. When we go to set it up, as I mentioned before, we're starting on a cell level. So on the lower left corner would be an example of the cell level daily management, which would escalate problems to either daily to department or a value stream daily man management, which would escalate problems that we cannot solve to the site level daily management. What's important is that the metrics are connected and that work that we are doing, we can see is making a difference on the site level. Any questions on phase number one, which is identify way to where to measure, what to measure, and what does tier daily management means and how is everything connected? Was that pretty clear? Yes. Any questions in regards to what, um, there's multiple people from different business units, I'm sure. Any um, areas, any questions where you already have a daily management? Any questions to how would you go about setting it up if you haven't started yet? Okay, if there's no questions, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. So once we identify where we should be measuring and what we should be measuring, we're moving on an installation phase. This is where we would start setting it up. Step number one is on those KPIs, key performance indicators that we are agreeing on, that we have agreed on, we would hone in on it to really make sure that those are the right metrics. Sir? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Do you have a question? No, sir. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So once we hone in on what are really the key metrics that we need to have to ensure success on hourly, daily, weekly, monthly basis, we start designing our future state and how we want those processes and goals to look like. 
we would try storm our daily management. We would put it up and we would try to see how it works, what our strategy is going to be. And the final step is really to set up a standard work on how we're going to run our meetings, who is going to be there, how often do we meet, what do we talk about, and so forth. So this will be an example of a daily management board. At JBB Co, you have your own um, letters or a version of a daily management. Um, the letters and format doesn't really mean it as much. We can have any letters of the alphabet. That's not really the objective. The objective is that when we look at the letter or a top of our board, is that we can see quickly within three seconds if we are winning or losing. Once we can see quickly whether we are winning or losing, we want to understand how is that metric behaving over time. So what we have be below each letter is trend charts that will show us whether something is getting worse, whether something is improving, or is it pretty flat um, over a certain period of time. Below our trend charts that are showing us how that metric is behaving is what we call Pareto charts. This is where we document the main causes over time. So every time when we have a red color, if you may, we have a miss, we would create a tick mark on our Pareto's to what is it that's contributing to the miss. To run our business, we need to take actions pretty quickly to make sure we can get things done on daily, on hourly, daily, weekly basis. So below the Pareto charts is where we document our urgent temporary countermeasures. We know that those are not going to solve the root cause, that those are kind of band-aids, but we need those band-aids to protect ourselves and our customers, to stop the bleeding, to keep things moving. For example, if I have a wrong part, or if my tool broke, we need to get a new part, we need to get a new tool. We know that we don't understand what is the root cause, but we will allow us time to actually apply systemic problem solving, which is on the bottom part of the board, to really drill down to what's happening. So once we take the short-term countermeasures and we stop the bleeding, we put the team together to start working on systemic problem solving, which in this chart we show to be on the bottom of the board. Irregardless, if we have three letters or six letters, our recommendation is that we do one problem solving per board. So our recommendation is for the team to pick the biggest challenge that we have and go after one thing rather than trying to solve all six in this example. Main reasons for that are that when we are working on one problem at a time, we're gonna move faster and we're gonna get to the root cause and we'll be able to put countermeasures in place faster, which will start driving improvements and we can see those results faster. That drives motivation and people are encouraged to bring more challenges and make them visible so we can improve our business even further. So our recommendation is for every board to do one problem solving at the time, because if you think about it, if we have, let's say five boards that we're starting with you know, on our site, and if we think about how many people do we need at each team, we wanna be able to feed the team with one pizza, depending on how big that pizza is, but we want to have anywhere between five and no more than nine people on our team. And if we have five boards and we're trying to do, you know, six letters for every board, that is significant amount of people that are involved trying to solve the problems, which will most likely result in us not being able to solve all of them. And we're going to lose motivation and momentum. So our recommendation, one problem solving 
for daily management board at the time until we get a lot better. Are there any questions on how daily management board would look like? Well, you guys are a quiet group. Okay, so we're probably going to have 10 to 15 minutes towards the end. If you do not have any, any questions now, please write them down and uh, I'm going to open up to a team to ask any questions later on. So I'm going to walk us through the board as well as uh, what's inside and how does it work. So as I mentioned before, on top of the board is letters. And really, that is a way of showing us whether we are winning or losing quickly. We as humans are visual creatures, so we use colors, red, yellow, green, to help us understand whether we are winning or losing. When we're not shy of borrowing from what we have on our traffic lights. Uh, most companies use only red and green. Some companies like to use yellow whatever your preference is, it's okay, as long as we are all aligned and understand what it means. When we are picking the metrics for our board, it is very important that we pick a mix of lagging versus leading indicators. Leading indicators are the ones that are predictive activities they will lead to the final result. And lagging indicators are the ones that, those measurements would be the ones that we can see, but there's nothing we can do about it because they have happened in the past. So an example of a leading and lagging indicator, I'm gonna start with lagging. The example of lagging is closing the books. So we look at, you know, in this case, it will be month of March and we have, whatever, two weeks to close the books. So once we go through making sure that everything is aligned, properly documented, we look at month of March and we can present what happened during the month of March. Now there's nothing we can do about March. What we want is we want lots of metrics that will tell us what can we do to ensure we win in the month of March? So we're thinking about April now. What are activities that we are doing that are key to our success that we would measure that as we go day in and day out throughout the April, we can predict whether we are gonna win at the end of the April or not. The whole objective here is to have those leading metrics that we can see on our trend charts, whether we are gonna win for the month or not. And it really gives us time to react and do something different before it's too late. So let's practice leading and lagging indicators. So if you guys can read this slide, and let's have a dialogue on what do you believe KPI um, red arrows are telling us based on leading and lagging indicators in this process here. So as I mentioned before, this webinar is for learning purposes, is to keep us fresh during the times where we cannot be face-to-face. -face. And the whole objective here is that we have a dialogue. There's no wrong questions, right? There's no stupid questions. So I'm really looking for volunteers to speak up and say, what, you know, to you looking at this flow chart, what do items under red arrows? are showing you and how do you understand them? I think the one with discounts is basically looking at how big of a discount we give to, you know, customers. So, you know, we might want to say, 
you know, if it's greater than 15% um, of a discount, that might be a red per se, and, you know, less than 15% would be a green, um, you know, just from looking at a day-to-day -day perspective. Absolutely. And if we think about it from that perspective, then was it, when it moves on to approval by management, what do we believe might happen for items that have more than 15% of a discount versus less than 15? You know, th those could get kicked back, I would think. So, you know, a percentage of those ones that get moved on, what percentage of those gets approved and moved to the next step or what percentage gets kicked back for review? Absolutely. So if we were to measure, if we're getting, giving a bigger discount or less discount, how many orders are being approved or not, would it help us see the final number of orders confirmed? Yes. <clears throat> so, so, go ahead. The other thing this might tell us is, you know whether our discount is whether we need to do a price shift if we're always giving a discount we would have to ask why absolutely that's really a great point so when we are setting up a daily management if you're thinking about the levers right so we would have two i would have one lever here that will impact the second one. So if we think about when we go drive a car, when I push the gas pedal or accelerator, I see on the dashboard that I'm my speed is increasing. Same thing when I'm pushing a brake pedal, I can see that my speed is decreasing. It's the same thing we're trying to do with daily management and leading indicators. What are the key things, in this case, discounts, that will help us predict how many orders would get approved or not that will help us understand why some why do we always give discounts to certain customers maybe and help us collect that data and understand and apply problem solving and once we understand the discounts and we understand how many of those are getting approved or not it will help us predict how many orders will be confirmed so that's the whole objective of daily management is what levers can we measure and control so that we get the result at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month that we want. So I would like a few volunteers or at least one volunteer for this slide. And if you can please tell us your name, uh, which business unit you're coming from and what is your department that you're working in. And if you can walk us through who are your internal and external customers, what is the current pain that they feel, and how would we drive satisfaction to both of our internal and external customers? These are the key questions that we ask ourselves when we are setting up a daily management, because if we set up a daily management that is not connected and is not driving satisfaction to our customers then we probably don't have the right metrics so with that i'd like to open it up for some dialogue so that we can learn and practice together Um, I'll go. This, this is Chris Vilger from Morgan Corporation. I work in operations management. So um, internal customer would be the hourly worker on the shop floor. Um, you know, pain they, they may feel each and every day would be not having the correct or necessary tools to do their job. Um, an impact to their pain or satisfaction could be measured a, a simple pulse check each day at a, at a morning huddle in terms of if I have 30 people, of those 30 people, how many have the right job or tools they need for the job, uh, jobs that they're performing each day, and then, you know, what is the number that do not? And then, you know, I should be able to tell, you know, do they have what they need each and every day or do they not? Absolutely. 
normally when we're doing daily management, especially for the folks on a manufacturing floor, it's important that we have the paperwork, the work orders, whatever that we use that tell us what should be done. It's important that we have the material to put it together as well as the tools to use. Otherwise, we're going to waste time and resources looking for those things, you know, in, instead of performing the value add activities. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else? Can we please get one more? Sure, this is Bill Jackson. I'm a director of HR in Loudoun. And, um, <clears throat> you know, from a staffing standpoint, my primary customer would be the operations group. Um, obviously, there are others, but uh, for purposes of this exercise, the primary one would be operations. Um, <clears throat> the pain that they feel is that um, two things. One is, we've struggled to get the right number of people in here because it's a tight labor market. And then number two, um, pain perhaps from um, making sure that we're hitting all of the needs in terms of qualifications and so forth with the people that we do hire. So, um, you know, it's measured in a lot of different ways. One would be efficiencies on the floor, achievement of quality on the floor, safety, um, and then in terms of direct measurement, you know, are we meeting the manpower plan? Um, and then ultimately, are we meeting the quality of hire that we need to see? Excellent, absolutely. Those are great points. So as you guys, as we can see, the daily management in our HR department would probably not be that different. Um, than to what's in, in manufacturing. It's gonna look, one may look more for tools or materials, and stuff like that, while the other one is looking at how fast do we get uh, new people with the right skills available to our teams. When we are setting up our daily management, I would really encourage us to invite our, especially internal customers to be part of it, to explain to them why you know, why are we doing it? What are we trying to achieve? And they will help us with communicating what exactly pain they're feeling. And they will tell us what are some of the things that we can do for them to drive satisfaction. And when our customers know that we're trying to help them, then things get a lot better. Any other questions on how to set up a daily management, how to ask? proper questions, how to make sure that we understand who are our customers and what metrics we should have to drive satisfaction. Okay, if that's pretty clear, let's move on. Once we have agreed on the metrics and our customers have told us that yes, those make sense and they like them, the next step is to understand how is that metric behaving over time. Those trend charts or run charts help us understand the difference between where we are today and where we wanna be, what our standard or goal is, so that we can see what is the gap that we're trying to close and how is it behaving over time. When we are writing our problem statements, there are four elements that are critical to every problem statement. And those are, what is our standard? And what is the actual against the standard? What is the gap between the two? And the pattern of how is that behaving over time? This is an example of a run chart template. On the left-hand side, this is where we have a monthly tracking so we can see how that metric is behaving over a longer period of time. 
whether it's improving or is getting worse. On the right hand side, we have a daily tracking, if you may. In this example here, we have 31 days. So we would measure how is that metric behaving daily as well as monthly so we can understand whether the corrective actions or countermeasures that we have put in place are working or those countermeasures are not giving us results that we want so we can take action on it. Any questions on a run chart or a trend chart? And why are they so important? Once we understand how is that metric behaving, we want to document every reason for the miss. This is where we use the Pareto's. So on our daily management, we would make a tick mark, if you may, for every time there is a miss for the metric that we have chosen. We use the Pareto principle because it helps us see where is the where are the biggest contributors to the gap so that we as a team can tackle those and get good return on investment for our time when we have the paredos we are normally looking for close to 80 20 rule we want to go for the contributors that are causing 80 percent of our gap This is an example of a Pareto template. In this case, the major reasons for the miss are due to material shortage, test failures, and absenteeism. We as a team would decide, and we recommend that we only tackle one problem at a time. So in this case, we would look at material shortage, start to break that down to understand why is that happening, so we can drill down to root cause and put the permanent countermeasures in place. Any questions on a Pareto charts, what they do and why are they so important? Okay, once we document the reasons for the misses and we have a method, that will visually tell us where to focus on, we're moving on down to countermeasure phase. So as I mentioned before, part of a daily management is temporary urgent countermeasures. We know that those will not address the root cause, but they are necessary to protect our customers, stop the bleeding and keep the business running. They allow us time to focus on developing a permanent countermeasures. Those are the ones that address the root cause. They help us close the gap. When we are developing our permanent countermeasures, it is highly recommended to build them into the process because of sustainment part, when they are built into process, it's a lot easier to sustain them. Here's an example of a urgent temporary countermeasure and how we would use that going from a cell level, in this case, tier one daily management board onto the department or the value stream. And how would we provide feedback? So in this example, our team on manufacturing floor has recognized that we have a raw material that's out of spec and we cannot use it. So in this case, that team cannot do anything about it because it's completely outside of their control. We need different team members to help us solve that problem. So how we would do that is our team leader or supervisor for that area, for that cell, would document the miss and we would bring it up to the tier two daily management board. So we would write it on the tier two or department or the value stream level daily management uh, countermeasure area. Then we have raw material that's out of spec. In this case, 
engineer who is present there would take an action to update the drawing. In this case, Bob, when Bob takes that action on a higher level daily management, Bob is the one that comes back to the tier one daily management board and updates what is being done about it. This way we create direct feedback that for the issues that we could not solve ourselves that have been escalated, who is working on it and what are they doing about it? It is recommended that Bob would attend one or two of our daily management meetings up front to tell us what he's doing about it in this case. And then when the action is done, it would be really good for Bob to come back and let us know that it's closed so that Bob too can keep an eye on validation, making sure that updated drawing is really giving us material that's within a spec all the time going forward. So any questions on how we would escalate countermeasures from one tier daily management to the higher level and how we provide feedback? If there's no questions, once we do our urgent countermeasures, we're moving down to systemic problem solving. So as I mentioned before, the four elements, the letter or ability for us to see whether we are winning or losing quickly, the trends, whether that, how is that metric behaving over time, the Pareto's, the areas where we document every miss for that metric, and the urgent countermeasures would be what I call a daily, daily management, if you may. This is where we are driving the business on a daily, hourly basis, and we're putting temporary countermeasures in place. When we move down to systemic problem solving, which is on the bottom of our board, this is where we apply more resources and time to really understand what's happening, what are the root causes, and we put per permanent countermeasures in place. The daily management meetings and problem solving meetings should be run differently. Daily management meetings should be quick 10 to 15 minutes meeting, while problem solving meetings we recommend to be at least one hour long, once per week. And there are two different things that we talk about during those. One is what do we need to do urgently to get to keep us going? while another one is what's happening, why is it happening, or assigning homework, and we're really spending time to understand what is the root cause so we can put proper countermeasures in place. This is an example or the best practice recommendation. How we recommend that next to the every daily management board, there's a problem, problem solving board, as you can see in this case, in this example, we're working on one problem at a time. What's really good about having a problem solving board next to a daily management board is that we as a team meet at the Gemba where work is done. Uh, people in our cell or in our department can see what we are doing about it. They can see real time how we are progressing. And that really motivates them to bring more challenges uh, up front and visible so we can continue to improve our business. Any questions on problem solving? How does it work with daily management? Okay, yeah, that was pretty clear. We're moving on down to how to run daily management meeting. So there are 10 rules, if you may, or recommendations. Number one is to be on time. We all know that people come late to our meetings. They want to be updated or we have the urge to update them and that really creates distraction during the meeting. Because these are 10 to 15 minute meetings it's a really big deal. When we are in a daily management meeting, it's really 
important that we are listening and that we do not, not have inside conversations. We picked what we believe are the most important metrics and our teammate is telling us what is not working and potentially asking for our help on how to solve the problem. When we are having a side conversation, we are really not showing a sign of respect that not just to the team member, but that the metrics that we have picked are not important. So it's really important not to have side conversations. As I mentioned before, these are 10 to 15 minutes. So we as a team need to discuss it, decide and act. If daily management is starting to last 45 minutes or an hour, then we're not asking the right questions. We may not have the right metrics or we may not have the right people present. I talked about leading and lagging indicators. Our job during the daily management is to make the news and not report the news. If we choose a lot of lagging metrics, then there's no other way but to report the news. So leading indicators are the key to measure. And as we take action on those, we're gonna be making the news. It's important when we come to the meeting that we are prepared, as well as that we have a data and we have a fact-based discussions. When we take action, it's really important that we honor our commitments. We want to follow the process and engage with others. During a daily management meeting, we want to make sure that everybody plays. Having what I call tourists is really not helpful. That means that we have either too many people, they really cannot hear us or they're not engaged and it's not helpful for them. So that doesn't help us on how to run a business. So if we are present at the daily management board, we're playing, meaning that we own the letter or there's engagement in discussion. So I already talked about, right? We recommend daily, daily meetings, if you may, especially in the operations areas. Um, they should be 10 to 15 minutes long and everybody should play. Each KPI or key performance indicator needs to have an owner. We should share the load among the team members so that everybody plays. And that really helps drive ownership and accountability to all the team members. So some of the rules and guidelines, kind of refresher again. So our agenda should be posted. 10 to 15 minutes, we should know what time do we meet. This should be our standard work. How often do we meet and who is present? Our boards should be in our work areas so we don't have to spend time walking away from our area to update it. Because if you think about it, I talked about the dashboard that tells us whether we are winning or losing. When we set up daily management in our area, it's our dashboard on how we are doing. So people who are doing the work should be looking at it and it should be giving us feedback whether what we are doing is helping us or not. Any questions on how to run a daily management meeting before we move on to sustaining part? If there's no questions, I'm gonna move on to how to sustain it. So there's a third step in our installation is sustainment of a daily management. One of the recommendations is that we do layered process audits. In this case, we would do random audits on our daily management. We all know that random audits are most effective. Uh, it should be visible. So when we are doing audits, when we're looking at our daily management, we should have a visual controls of um, how that metric is behaving. One of the ways on how to do an audit is through daily management walk. 
So that walk should be attended by senior leaders and cross-functional team members. Our senior leaders and rest of the cross-functional team members should have that on their Outlook calendar scheduled. It should be random. When we are doing the walk, we're there to observe how our teams are working or how our teammates are, teammates are working. We're there to support them and provide coaching and guidance, as well as identify opportunities for improvement. So as a reminder and a refresher, I've walked us through daily management, what it is and how it works. It's a dashboard that tells us where are we uh, and how we are doing today, this week, and how we're going to win for the month of April. We, as we learn anything, go through the process of learning, doing, and teaching. Normal part of the learning process is confusion and struggle. And there's really no better way of learning but actually doing it. Then we put in the reps and we ask for support and coaching along the way so that we can move on to the teaching phase where we help other teammates develop and we may we support the culture of the company. If you are interested in learning more about daily management on your own kind of self-learning, these are the books that we would like to recommend. If you, another way to learn more about it is to sign up for our quarterly newsletter, or you can follow us on our company link, LinkedIn page. This is where we post different articles, differ, different bits and pieces of the latest lessons learned. And it may be something that you can use in your business to help you improve. So with that, I think we have about seven minutes left, and I would really like to open it back up so if there are any questions on how would we go about implementing daily management and how does it look like? Try to get back to the board. There we go. Any questions on how to pick a metrics? How do we connect daily management? How do we drive problem solving? Was this helpful? Yeah, I thought it was uh, pretty good, helpful information, and you know, I don't have any further questions. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, if there's no other questions, uh, thank you guys for joining. As I mentioned before, you can download the same presentation from the dashboard on the webinar. You can also reach out to your CI department. They can share one hour training deck. They can also share a full uh, training deck that has a lot more material in it. Um, and with that, I thank you. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Good job. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.